Conrad from Motion VFX here. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create and use a depth map to make a stunning entrance animation. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. I'll show you two methods. The first one, which we'll start with, involves generating a single frame from which we'll create a depth map. The second method is generating a full video with depth based on your original footage. We start by setting the playhead to the first frame. Then go to the top menu where in the file tab, we select share and then save current frame. We save the frame as a JPEG. Next, we go to Photoshop and open our frame. In the filter tab, we select neural filters. In the photography category, we enable depth blur and check the option output depth map only. Click OK, flatten the image and save it. The next method involves using the entire video saved as an image sequence. Select your clip and press X on your keyboard. Then go to the File tab, click Share, and choose Export Image Sequence. If you don't see this option, you need to add it using Add Destination. Simply drag the option from the menu on the right to the list on the left. Once the Export Image Sequence option is visible, click on it and save your video so that the frames are exported as JPEG files. We go back to Photoshop and open the first frame of our image sequence. Then we go to the Window tab and make sure the Actions panel is enabled. In the Actions panel, we click the plus button, name the action, and start recording. Just like before, we go into Neural Filters and create the depth map. We flatten the image and save it. Stop recording the action by clicking the Stop button. So at this point, it's best to undo all the changes, so the first frame no longer has the effect applied, and save it again. This prevents the batch process from duplicating the action. To start the batch processing of the frames we generated, go to File, then Automate, and choose Batch. In the window that appears, click Choose, and select the folder containing your saved frames. Make sure the options shown in the video are selected, and click OK. Photoshop will now begin the batch process of generating depth maps for all frames of your video. Now, I'll show you how to import the prepared image sequence. Click on File, then Import, and choose Media. Locate the folder where your image sequence is saved, select all the frames, and drag them onto the timeline. You'll notice that each image lasts much longer than a single frame. To fix this, with all frames selected, press the keyboard shortcut, Ctrl, D. Then press 1 on your keyboard and hit Enter. Next, we place our frames into a compound clip and position it above our video. Then, for better organization, we place everything into another compound clip. Now I'll show you how you can use our depth map. We go into our compound clip and, in the transition section, we look for the built-in gradient image transition. Drag it onto your video, and as the input it will reference, we use the depth map we created earlier. Then, disable the visibility of the depth map by selecting the specific layer and pressing the V key. Go back to the timeline where both of our videos are located, and open M extension, where we search for the grain distortion preset from the M Roto AI reveal collection. Drag the element onto the compound clip and mask the object along with the background element that appears on the screen. After the tracking is complete, go to the inspector, disable out animation, and reduce the mass quake amount to zero. Then, duplicate the effect to make it more visible by pressing Command C, then Shift Command V. In the window that appears, select only the option to paste the effect. Let's add the first scene back into a compound clip and adjust the animation speed to make the composition more dynamic. We do this for both video clips. Next, we create a basic transition between the shots using the keyboard shortcut Command-T. 
You'll notice that FCP also added transitions at the beginning of the first video and the end of the second. We won't need those, so we delete them. Double click to enter the settings of our transition and adjust the timing to set when the transition should start within the first video. Now, go to M extension and search for the flash transition. Drag it onto the previously created basic transition and choose the replace option. Trim the second clip to make it shorter. The next step is to add color grading. For this, we'll use the film emulation element from the M Music Video 2 collection. Search for it in N extension and drag it over your composition. This element is a title, so we'll use that to apply Motion Blur AI, but we'll do that after editing the published parameters of our grading. Go back to N extension, search for Motion Blur AI, and apply it to the title with the color grading. And that's it! I Composition is ready. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to find more tutorials like this one.